Good morning and welcome, everyone. The recording has started. So let's pray and then we will uh, continue. Diksha, could you please lead us? Your guidance, your knowledge, Lord. So she will teach us, Lord, according to your will, according to your word. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. I keep the rest of the day in your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you. So we were talking about some of some of the things that we can do to exercise our authority. We saw that uh, there are defenses we can have in place, or we can be offensive against the enemy. Uh, and then we can engage in many different things like prayer, declarations. Uh, we can do righteous actions. We can pray in agreement. So many things can be done. But before we get into it, I'll review what we had touched last time. Uh, but I want to remind us, we can do this for ourselves or we can do this for others. OK, so we can, uh, let's say, we are facing some kind of a difficulty from Satan. So we can pray for ourselves. We can declare for ourselves. But if, suppose, somebody in our home, maybe our brother, our sister, our mother, father, you know, somebody is going through an issue. Uh, it could be addiction, it could be some other form of oppression. We can stand in the gap to pray for them. So that is the powerful um, truth. Whatever we are learning, we can exercise for ourselves or we can exercise it for others. Okay, So uh, that is really uh, a privilege that God has given us and we can use it. So we don't have to feel that, okay, uh, how can I intervene? At least, you know, we can pray, we can declare. And we have seen powerful testimonies of how God is working in the lives of others because somebody is engaging in spiritual warfare. So here is the important thing. Exercise our authority and dominion. We should learn to do that. As a believer, if we don't exercise it, every time Satan will overpower and then we should not say, oh, look at Satan, he's so powerful. That's not the reality. Jesus has already given us the victory. So it's the responsibility of the believer. If we live defeated lives, that's not, you know, something that God intended. No. We can be victorious. That's already established. Jesus has done the good work on the cross. Now it is my responsibility to overcome. So Satan... There will be many struggles, but live an overcoming life every time it is possible. It's very much possible. So it's possible for us. It is also possible for the people who are in our lives. Okay, so now let's see what are the things we can do. We said, firstly, we can resist um, and we can protect ourselves. Protecting ourselves, how can we do that have, when we have a right relationship with God? Okay, so uh, when we saw that in the garden, Adam and Eve, that's what God did for them, isn't it? First thing is relationship. So when we have a relationship with God, there is, you could say, uh, you know, kind of automatic protection. We're not saying everything is safe because of that. We also have to take authority, but protection comes when we have right relationship with God. So maintaining that is so very important. Then we said that, um, yeah, we have to stand against the devil. Okay, Put up a fight. So putting up a fight need not look like we are warring against uh, Satan, but even standing and not giving up. When we say, okay, I don't give up, that is also like you're fighting against the devil, right? Just by standing. So that is important. We should not give up. Now, let's go to, uh, till now we discussed defense. Now, how to be on the offensive, how to take charge and uh, get the devil out or the enemy out. So there are certain action words 
which we can use. Where are we getting these words from? These words are from the Bible. These words have already been used by Jesus uh, or by the apostles or believers in scripture. So we are going to take those words and we can use it to exercise our authority. Okay, so we speak these words. Which word to speak at which time? Holy Spirit will guide. So it will depend on the Holy Spirit. It depends on the situation. But we can see which are all the words that we can use. Um, so the first one is rebuke. Okay, Rebuke. We know Jesus rebuked the fever. It says rebuke the fever and it left. So Peter's mother-in-law, she had fever. He rebuked it and it left. So there are times when we just have to rebuke. We can rebuke a sickness or we can rebuke, a, uh, you know, maybe there is fear or something. Some We feel like there is a spiritual connection. And in that moment, Holy Spirit can tell us, okay, now you rebuke. So rebuke. Got it? So we can rebuke. We can command. I command you. References for each of these, uh, these words are given in the scripture. I'm not going to read through everything. Otherwise, it will take so much time. But it is there. We can rebuke. We can command. Okay? Especially when it comes to demonic things. So when we, uh, when, when we, we are experiencing something, you know, you can say, hey, I command you. Satan, I command you uh, to stop this in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Okay? So uh, be tuned into the Holy Spirit at which time we got to do this. All right. So this is something we can do. But there are times when uh, we said, you remember there is a progression. Right? Oppression. Uh, then it goes into possession. So when there is possession, we have to cast out. We also have to cast out if we are sure that demonic spirits are involved in one situation. So it's not just, let's say, a person inside a person that is a demon spirit. But in a situation, we know definitely there is a demon involvement. We can command to cast out. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Casting out is what? Removing. Okay, getting the demon spirit out. So that is what we have to command. So uh, we've seen Jesus do this. I, he cast out demons by one word. Scripture says with one word, he cast out the demons. So when we cast out the demons, where do the demons go? Where, where do they usually go? Uh, sorry, Akil. Into the pigs. Okay. Yeah. Or they go to another person. It's coming out of a person. The demons are coming out of a person. But where are they going? Sister, they go to another person also. Please use the mic. It'll be helpful for the online students. How about our online friends here? Okay, Lucy is saying they're roaming around. That sounds quite scary, but that's true. They're roaming around. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Sister Gertrude, you said something. We missed you. Yeah, I said, Sister, they go to somebody else. Okay. <laughs> they go to somebody else. Okay. Yeah, Shani is saying someone else or thing into a thing. A Lucy searching for some other person. Okay, Shaker, try to find empty place. Hmm. Yeah, so true. According to what Jesus spoke in Matthew 12, right? Matthew 12, where he cast out the demons. Uh, he said that they will go looking for, like they'll, they'll go into arid land. They'll just roam around. Why are they roaming around? What, what are um, demon spirits called? We did it when we started Believer's Authority. There's a name. Anybody? What are demon spirits called?
okay wandering spirits correct uh, but there's like a fun name that defines them okay this embodied spirits you remember this embodied spirits which means they're outside a body and they're always looking for a body so the answers which we had in the chat are correct uh, they are looking for a place empty place which means a person or a thing so when they are cast out that's what happens now a lot of people believe that when we cast out a demon it goes to the demons go to hell that's not true because there is an appointed time when demons satan will be cast into the bottomless pit till that time they will be on the earth they cannot go anywhere else they will be here basically it's like okay one place they are out of they go occupy another place so that's how they work okay so uh, when we cast out we don't have to say i cast you out and i put you in hell some people say things like that because we don't have the authority to do that so just cast out that's it so we just cast them out in the name of jesus so in this way we can exercise authority so if you find that uh, someone is oppressed or, or let's say possessed by demons this is what we have to do use the authority which jesus has given cast out the demon okay so cast out is one way to exercise the authority now the next word we can use is destroy i destroy your works in the name of jesus we uh, you could say like um, i break or that's what it means isn't it destroy we see in scripture that jesus came to destroy the works of the devil so let's um, imagine we are praying for somebody and uh, satan has is attacking them maybe in the form of sickness or there are some patterns in their lives what are those patterns um, maybe patterns of failure or patterns of giving up something something is there and holy spirit is showing us that we have to break it we have to destroy it so while praying by faith say that i am destroying the works of the devil in the name of jesus so when we say that will it break will it break or not break what do you think it'll break okay. how many of you feel it's going to break when you pray like that or how many of you feel it'll break or not break destroy i destroy the works of the enemy in this person's life uh, i don't know what a smile means is that a yes or a no will it get destroyed or not okay sister gertrude very honest answer maybe maybe not <laughs> maybe maybe not okay thank you sister Lucy will be destroyed. Shani, yes. What about uh, the others here in the class? Destroyed. Hands up. Okay. Some hesitantly, slowly is going up. Okay, fine. So we should have the faith. If we don't have the faith, then why are we saying it? So when we pray, always believe and pray. If we don't believe it, then there's no point saying it. right so when we are saying it we are believing it will happen that is why we are saying it so like i try to do this when we are praying for people like put your heart and soul in it and really believe god yes this is going to be destroyed so you're commanding the demon i or whatever works of the devil uh, i command you or i destroy you in the name of jesus the works of the enemy in your life are destroyed we destroy that that sickness or that pattern so faith is necessary that's what jesus taught us right you pray believing then you will receive so if we are thinking maybe i don't know where is the faith then how will it work how will all this authority exercising authority work so we have to believe and then say it now i understand even when we say that the symptoms may persist 
the issue may not go tomorrow but we have to keep doing it maybe two three times we are praying for that person and there can be other issues also maybe that person is not um, careful to trust trust god or get away from sin there can be other issues but at least from our side we have to be 100% isn't it so when we believe and we speak we'll see that god is working okay god is working uh, and uh, it's so encouraging and it's many times people will not share the testimony sometimes testimonies will come and they'll tell oh that day you prayed and this happened because it's not that we prayed but faith faith can move the mountain so apply faith apply authority we will see the results so whenever we command like this do it by faith and we say we destroy the works of the devil so one way of destroying is that but we also know that the anointing of the lord destroys so when the the what is the anointing the power and the presence of the holy spirit so when the power and the presence of the holy spirit is there even then many things will get destroyed which are of the enemy okay so we have to focus on these things faith anointing so then we will be able to do effective ministry all right so this is how we have to uh, exercise authority we already know that jesus has destroyed satan isn't it so it's it's nothing new that we are doing we are just what we call enforcing victory is already there you are just applying the victory so this is the way to apply it then next is remove 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 is like destroy only if there is a burden then we are saying let that burden be removed okay so same applies by faith and by the release of authority with our tongues we speak uh, and of course the anointing because scripture say it's the anointing that destroys the yoke it breaks the yoke it removes the yoke so that's how we understand that so we can depend on the anointing on um, you know a, a person's life or the anointing of the word of god itself you know sometimes if we just speak the word it breaks the works of the enemy but we have to have faith in it you have to have faith in it and go ahead and do that so remove and then overcome overcome means it it's like that wrestling term overcome you remember we did an exercise where one is on top of the other like the person who's winning okay so that is overcome so in our lives we know that there is a constant struggle with satan and the demonic power so it's like a wrestling match but every time we have to overcome satan okay we have to overcome demonic spirits so conquering uh, overcoming or subduing demonic spirits is necessary so i mean exercise it in your daily life we can think of uh, the areas where we feel um, you know we we are struggling okay and in that area try to conquer try to conquer in that area so i remember for me i think it was fear okay a uh, fear of the unknown what is going to happen and sometimes i just sit and think for no reason waste of time like what is going to happen what will happen will happen what's the point right so i remember once i don't exactly know what happened that time uh, but it was something to do with my work some things were changing so i was very worried that what will happen to my job what if i lose my job you know at at that point in time uh, and i started with one thought and it just went on like okay then if you don't have the job then you don't have an income then this then that so fear like we literally fear gripped me and that was once uh, in my life where i i felt it was more than my fear i felt like there was like a demonic oppression like i could not leave that place for almost an hour i'm trying to get out of it but i couldn't get out of it and i was like hey what's happening i'm a believer i can't be so scared i have to trust god but i'm telling you the facts uh, i really felt like it's a spirit 
it's a demonic spirit that is oppressing me and i couldn't really get out of it but in those moments that's when you have to apply all this you know i rebuke i resist you in the name of jesus i started uh, you know uh, confessing scriptures uh, the righteous are bold as a lion okay, i have not received a spirit of fear uh, and god god has good plans for my life i just started declaring declaring i remember it took a, a few hours that evening to actually be able to get up and move around because it was so real so real and i know that it was demonic for sure it was more than just you know the sometimes our own emotions are there but this was demonic so uh so that is one experience i i remember of overcoming overcoming but then there are many such experiences i'm just sharing for our benefit so we may go through many such things in our lives but every time we have to overcome so okay you overcome fear and you overcome anxiety you overcome depression you overcome sadness you overcome something else right condemnation accusation but keep getting up and keep moving forward so this is all practical stuff we we've got to do it experience it then we know the power and the value of these things right so as i said earlier we can do for ourselves or we can do for others maybe others are finding difficult so let's say a brother right they are in fear very simple maybe we can uh, if we can meet them once in a few days we can say okay don't worry we'll pray with you just simple prayer pray that they will overcome in the name of jesus in case we can't meet them maybe a phone call right and say okay every day let's pray let's see you you tell me how it is after one week so this this is the way we can invest and when you when we do this we'll find that they'll also be overcoming right so these are ways in which we can do it for ourselves or we can do it for others to help people overcome okay okay so let's move on um yeah any questions any thoughts yes yes uh, komal if demons are working in a large area huh. cities or villages yes and like yeah. spirit of disunity spirit of murder adultery yeah. so how to use this words mm. yeah so in a larger area i think uh, uh, firstly we have to break their power like you have to bind the strong man right so for that prayer fasting and prayer will help a lot and if it is larger area then a larger set of people like uh, let's say the pastors in the city leaders in the city or uh, your whole congregation so more people praying is usually effective i'm not saying one person can't pray but it will be good if more people can pray then you can see the change yeah. we can use this cast out you can yeah 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 I can, cast yeah. out all the demons yes. of spirit of adultery. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can. So when we do corporate prayer, all of us are praying. We can all agree. Like one person can say the words. We remove. We pray. We destroy. Everyone else can say amen. So it can work like that. Anything? Any question? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Shani. I have two questions. The first question is, I know you said at the beginning, you can use these for other people, but how do you do it? I mean, I know you say you can just pray, but I'm thinking about last week, how you told us to use our weapons, the armor, faith and all that. That seems like that's more that somebody has to do for themselves. Like, mm -hmm. are we supposed to do or just pray for them? I mean, because there's a whole bunch of things that people should do on their own. And next question is that, the believer feels that they have a demon inside of them. Can they cast a demon out themselves? Mm. If there's nobody else to cast it, they feel they have one. Can they do it themselves? Yes. Okay. Uh, good questions. So, uh, see, yes, armor we have to put on. That we cannot put another person's armor, you know, dress them up in spiritual armor. We can't do that. But we can exercise authority by, as we said, prayer, declaration commanding so we can command right for another person 
So it's possible that way, Shani. I hope uh, that addresses your question. Now, uh, you're saying if a person has, if we realize that I have a demon, then can I cast out that demon? OK. Uh, answer is yes. Because authority works. I mean, authority is authority. And uh, we can speak over ourselves. Uh, we can become stronger in the word, in the presence of God and all. And the, re the truth is that uh, you know there was one sister. I don't know which year it was, but she asked the question that, uh, how come uh, in today's church services, some church services we see demons are cast out and all, but in many of the church services, at least the ones that we see around us, nobody is actively casting out during the service. So what happens? You know, so many people are coming with so many demons, and then the demons are there only. But you see, even when the word is being preached, even when people are consecrating themselves to God, when people are making commitments, it doesn't, we don't have, we don't need anyone to go and cast it out. Demons are automatically leaving. You understand? So even in that way, Shani, when we become strong in the Lord, um, there are, there are, there are spirits that will just leave. And you will be surprised. You'll be like, oh, I used to have that habit, but I don't have it anymore. What happened? Because we are getting stronger in the Lord, and uh, you know there are mental patterns that are being renewed. Uh, there is a lot of change coming. And demons can't stay, if that's the case, when we are stronger in our will, when we are stronger uh, in the word. So does, does that uh, make sense? Yes, that does. And so that, especially with the second question. So first one, I guess the pink, I mean, you can't put, like you said, somebody has to put on their own armor, but casting out just depends on what it is. If we can apply it to other people, we can't. If they have to do it themselves, then of course we can't do that. That's kind of basically what you're saying for the first one then, right? Yeah. So to an okay. extent, to whatever extent possible, we can stand in the gap. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, so that's about casting out and using all these uh, words of command. Now let's talk about binding. Oh, question. Okay. So, yeah. ma'am, I just want to ask about casting out, like, mm. uh, like small example. I want to share, like, uh, when the demons are working at small children. So mm. what I saw is many times when they are casting out passes. So because of uh, the children can't survive that power, yeah. they'll uh, command that demon spirit come into another woman, like their mother or anyone else there. So is it right or uh, uh, we can do like that or not? Okay. So you're saying, uh, is it okay to to cast it out of someone and ask that spirit to go occupy yes, another? Yeah, yeah. Not like that, mom. Like huh. if the children is suffering with that demon mm. spirit, mm. so the pastor will command that spirit to come into another woman to cast out. Understood. Understood. Yeah. So, uh, see, as far as what we see in the ministry of Jesus, we will apply. Yes. So we don't see that in the ministry of Jesus. He never allowed the spirit to go into another human being. Animals, yes, uh, but another human being, no. So then therefore, what we can do, ma'am, like when the spirit is working on the children, what we can do? Just cast it out. You don't have to worry about uh, where it will go and all that. That's not our, uh, you know, that's none of our, we, we don't have to lose our energy in that. We just cast out and we will come to it later. When we cast out demons, there is also a post deliverance ministry, which we have to do. That is. We have to teach the children, first of all, lead them into salvation and help them to grow in the Lord. So when we do all those things, even if demons come back, they cannot enter. So that's how we work. Uh, and uh, yeah, it does not have to go into the elders. If, if, if they do like that, is there any chance to come again among the children? On them? Uh, meaning if we just cast out and not do anything, is it? Yeah. Is there is any chance to come again, that demon spirit on the children? Yeah. So see, in uh, that is why deliverance ministry is very sensitive that way. Uh, once we are delivered, there is 100% chance okay. of coming under attack again, a stronger attack. Because Jesus himself said, the demon will go, come back with seven other spirits. Every time it will happen which is why we have to make the person strong. When they come back, they should not have any place to enter. 
So every time we are engaged in deliverance ministry, if possible, we have to engage in counseling, regular prayer, uh, involve the person in the church. So much work is there. Only casting out is not the end. There's a lot of work after that. Okay, so we'll have to work with the children and equip them. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Uh -huh. um, and what is the last part? Yeah. See, to be born again, okay, uh, or, or let us look at it this way. So the question is, if a person is not water baptized, can they exercise authority like this, right? Answer is yes, because when we are born again, we receive authority from Christ. So being baptized is a, a acknowledging or like we, we are confessing that we have now become a believer. That is what baptism is. So baptism is not a requirement for a person to be born again. Are you all understanding what I'm saying? Okay, there's an entire chapter on this in the APC publication, House of God. So you can go study it, Water Baptism. Or there's a book also, Water Baptism, you can study it. So salvation uh, is, it happens first. And then at any point in a person's life, they are water baptized, right? Now, even if there is a delay, we can do all this because God has given the authority already. You don't need water baptism to get this authority. Okay, does it uh, answer your question? Okay, great. So water baptism is not going to uh, give us our salvation. But once we are saved, we are confessing that we are now saved. Then we are water baptized. That's how it is. Yes. So when you actually pray for someone for, uh, say, like casting out or thing, mm. do we feel that in the spirit that uh, that has actually left the person, or you just leave it to the spirit world that you've done your work and? Yeah. So um, you know this one um, actually, Akhil, it's. Um, we have to be, as as I was saying, be led by the spirit, right? So in the case of uh, the casting out that Jesus did, in many places we see that the person fell down and the spirit left. They screamed and the spirit left. So there are some signs that can show that the demon actually left. It can happen. But in some situations, we won't see that. So the only evidence is, a changed life. So if you are noticing this person and the person is so different now, then obviously the demon left. That is why they are different. So yeah, sometimes there is um, like some signs through which you can tell, yes, the demon left. Okay. All right. Good questions. See, because this is very practical, we have to use it. So there is no point looking at it, you know, only like, oh, we have to finish the content. Uh, let's go. Let's go to binding and losing. So Jesus said, Matthew 16, uh, was, uh, you know, 18 and 19, uh, have the keys of the kingdom, right? I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Uh, now, what he is telling is, whatever is permitted in heaven, you permit in, on earth. Whatever is not permitted in heaven, you stop it on earth. That is the assignment. So every believer, every believer can do that. So we may ask the question, every believer, how old should the believer be? How old should a believer be, by the way, to exercise spiritual authority? Can children exercise spiritual authority? Yes, you just have to be a believer, right? So age is not a problem. How long should you have been a believer? 
How long should one be a believer to exercise spiritual authority? Like another aspect is here, it's like uh, from how long we are believer. That hmm. is also not necessary. If you are just one day old believer, okay. it's fine. Very good. So as long as you're born again, isn't it? That's when we receive the authority. We can exercise it for an overcoming life. So now that Jesus has given the keys of the kingdom, we have to bind. Now tell me what are the things we should bind? Whatever is not in heaven, we should not allow here. So we will bind. What are those things? What do you want to bind? What do we want to bind? We want to bind the evil plans of the enemy. Okay. Yeah, so bind the evil plans of the enemy. Good, yes. Anything else we want to bind? Any oppression. Okay. Okay, against the will of God, any oppression, we want to bind it. Great. Anger, anxiety, depression, sickness, barrenness. So there's a whole list here. True. So we can bind anything which is not of God. Okay. We can bind it. What should we lose? What do we want to lose? Lose means what? Lose is release. We release or we let go. What? Do we want to let go? Whatever is in heaven, good things, we can lose it. So what are those things, good things in heaven, which we want to release? Blessing, yes. Healing, very good, yes. So blessing, healing, what else is there in heaven? Think. Yeah, deliverance, freedom, joy, peace, right? So many things are there in heaven. And Jesus is telling us, come on, I give you, it's like a blank check, right? Take it, you do it. What is not there in heaven, if you see that here, stop it. What is uh, there in heaven, if you don't see it here, release it. So that is how we will exercise the capacity to bind and loose. Okay. Now let's understand binding and losing a little bit more. So what is binding? Binding is, um, if you have seen, when the police come and arrest, what do they do? They'll handcuff the person. right? They'll tie the hands. Meaning that person carries some power to do evil, but for a period of time. So I'm using the word momentarily. For some amount of time, we are stopping them by putting handcuffs. That is what binding means. Okay, So tying the hands of the devil so that he cannot continue with his strategy. So let's say, okay, in a marriage, just an example, it is given in our notes also. I'm using the same thing. Uh, if in a marriage, you know, between the, the spouses, there's an issue. Okay, and we know you sense that it is a demonic problem. It's not normal, it's demonic. Then what to do? So if the couple are believers, they can bind. They can bind what Satan is doing. They can bind what the demons are doing. Okay, so let's say, for example, a lot of confusion is going on, and it's a spirit of confusion. So they bind the spirit of confusion. So what happens? We are temporarily stopping the actions of those demons. Now, is that the end of the problem? Is that the end of the problem? We bound. We can bind, so we bound. Now, is it over? Everything is over, solved problem? No. Actually, the problem is not solved. We can, we can kind of, um, you know, uh, stop the devil for some time. But the actual issues have to be dealt with. So why is that confusion happening? Maybe there's a communication problem. Maybe there is a, some other problem. right? The issues have to be settled. Now, if the couple don't settle it, only binding will not help. So binding is like God is giving the authority to uh, you know, stop the devil for a period of time. 
but beyond that many times we have to do some work so maybe they require counseling maybe they require uh, you know some elders to come and intervene something something has to be done to solve the problem if the problem is not solved the spirits those that we bound they still have access for now they are not doing anything because we bound them but they can again start to do their work so binding in itself is not necessarily a solution it's just helpful in that moment so that is what binding means same thing now when we are praying for someone that person is going through a certain uh, you know addictions or whatever uh, we bind so the person is good for a little bit of time but in that time i have to teach the word i have to counsel the person i have to find help i have to do everything else which will make the person stronger that way if the demons want to attack again they lost the chance they lost the opportunity so binding helps a little bit but you know even beyond that there is a lot of work to do so that's how binding works oh yes uh, is that a question yeah so are you saying that i'm trying to make sure i'm clear yeah so are you saying that binding is um temporary yeah i would say that in um most instances in in some that might be the final but in most um there is work to do beyond binding so it is temporary then is that what you're saying I'm kind of confused yeah it's temporary okay. because you just bank of the demons but that's not the end no okay because i know what you were saying in terms of people try to um i guess like buying sickness you're saying people have to do something beyond that that they have a sickness that no medicine can help then mm -hmm. i guess if they're should they not buy sick should they not buy any kind of sickness this is just temporary or do they bind it and then follow up with scriptures i mean what do they do with the something that's in, you know, incurable that's that's my that's my question yes so in the case of sickness uh we could exercise authority in a different way so instead of binding we can command healing we can rebuke we can cast out so there are other things that can be done done in the case of sickness okay so don't so binding is not it's, it's yeah, not it for sickness so not, yeah it may not be applicable um you know every time as far as sickness is concerned okay so certain situations that you should just use binding for then yes that's right okay, okay thank you yeah thank you all right so that was about binding uh losing simply means we command the person to be set free now we know in uh, luke chapter 13 there was a lady she was um she was crippled she was bent over then when jesus comes to her he says woman thou art loosed we lose you or you know the power of god sets you free then she becomes straight like she stands up her body is is better now so what exactly happened jesus set her free he loosed her from the power of the devil so similarly sometimes when we are praying for people we may feel like that that okay i must command this you are loosed from this uh, spirit of infirmity you are loosed from this um, i mean it can be anything any oppression go ahead and command it so when we command that the person will actually be set free so losing works like that also and losing is where we can release or lose the works of heaven as well so we can pray things like okay i lose the peace of god over your life i lose the joy of god you know over this family i lose the blessings of god so as the holy spirit leads us it's okay to pray prayers like that also so you you lose someone from the oppressive spirit uh, and we lose the works of heaven into people's lives so um yeah we can apply it and we can see the power of these things so there are two more terms here i'll just briefly touch on that and then we can take a break allow disallow i don't allow you okay i don't allow you to do this where did jesus do that he did it when 
demon started speaking right in some situations the demons wanted to talk and jesus disallowed them he said i don't permit you to talk you can't talk so we can actually allow and disallow there will be times uh, you know in the case of uh, especially in the deliverance um process the demons may want to talk a lot or they may harm the person at that time we have to command i don't permit you to do this i don't permit you to speak so we can use our authority to stop them or you know allow them uh, to do certain things so allow and disallow is also something we can do and pulling down pulling down is another way to exercise our authority pulling down we've seen every thought which is not aligned to god's thoughts what are we supposed to pull it down right we have the capacity we can pull it down can we pull down thoughts that may be affecting our loved ones to an extent yes because uh, let's say you know uh, in in uh, a child's mind they have all kinds of philosophies and they don't want to believe christ so as a parent you know one can pull down those those thoughts and say okay i tear down that kind of a philosophy in the name of jesus uh, may my child's eyes be opened to the truth of the gospel so these are all prayers which are effective and we can pray them okay so i'm just going to stop here uh, we'll go for a break and then we will come back we will complete the rest of the chapter okay quickly uh, just a moment i uh, missed one question brother sanjay is asking what is the difference between demon and fallen angel if we call demons disembodied spirits then at some point in time they must have had some kind of body okay uh, first answer is yes uh, demons are fallen angels only disembodied spirits all uh, addressing the same category of beings now your next one where you're saying they should have had a body uh, i honestly have not thought about all that so uh, yeah that's probably something to uh, research or if anyone else has an answer please do drop it here in the chat all right so i i hope that helps uh, we'll go ahead and take a break yeah 10 minutes thank you okay.